Welcome everybody, that's Spacecraft Films celebrating the 50th anniversary back in 2007. Uh, anybody in Spacecraft Films? I don't work for them, but I'd like to give them a plug. And uh, it's a beautiful thing that they put together on the internet for free. So uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Steve Brandt, recent transplant uh, from New York City, where I grew up watching the space program as a little kid. When John Glenn went around the Earth, I was in, I think, uh, second grade. And because my middle name is Glenn, everybody made a big fuss, <laughs> like as if I had some connection to the guy. But all I knew was I loved that we were exploring space, and I loved all that we've done, including getting over the tragedies that have occurred from time to time. Ah, microphone. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. Um, actually, in fact, that reminds me, uh, would anybody be kind enough to be the unofficial photographer to uh, record this so that we can uh, get the word out? This is not about me getting me out, it's about <laughs> us getting all this out, because I have my little humble YouTube channel, and I want to get this on. So, uh, uh, again, my name is Steve Brandt, and the reason this excited me as a kid was because of where we were going. But the reason this excites me today is because of how we got where we were going, where we went, and where we can still go. And I don't just mean how as in building rockets. I mean how as in the incredible collaborative uh, teamwork that developed the NASA culture, which today is an international culture because the International Space Program wasn't just built by us, and there's something very special about that, that process. It's, again, the results we achieved were amazing, but the process we used of people uh, pushing through ego issues, of uh, learning from each other, learning from tragedy, learning from just starting points. The, the, the saying is that when we made the commitment to go to the moon, there were like, a million things we literally didn't know how to do that we needed to figure out. And that didn't stop us from saying we're going to do it. It just meant that we decided that we would do it and that it would be this amazing learning, creative adventure. So that collaborative, creative, push through problems, don't let them stop you thing, uh, today it feels like we have lost this. As Americans, I can't speak internationally, although you might even say that there's some issues internationally when you look at what's going on with the Euro and uh, the stagnation. Uh, China is starting to slow down, so there's some global, there's a global dynamic to this as well. But my main concern, frankly, is what's happening here at home and the fact that we have a challenged uh, uh, society in America, I think, is an opportunity for we who love space to take not just the adventure and the journey side of what we've done, but this process, this amazing way to work together and turn that into something for us to champion. And the way I would like to do that is by getting a documentary film made where we tell the story of NASA's culture, where we interview the people. I've already met somebody today who knows his, uh, his next door neighbor is 78 years old, worked at NASA for years, has many stories to tell. Obviously, he's somebody who should be in this documentary. And uh, I have a cousin who has made many documentaries. Uh, he's Australian born, my father's sister's son. And uh, I'm going to go to him for advice. But what I wanted to do was present this idea here and get feedback from you all on the challenge of making a documentary on how to finance it, on whether you think this actually would work, could work, uh, ideas you have for the, uh, the way to tell a story effectively. I also bumped into someone here who has his own little film company. And uh, he's already made a movie. I think he told me it was a comedy. But I'm going to get back to him about the challenge of, again, making this an interesting story, because in my research, uh, and it was already referenced just before downstairs in the uh, talk by uh, John Spencer, 
uh, the space tourism guy, uh, in 1955, Walt Disney decided to help the American people learn that space travel was no longer a fantasy. He did it for a number of reasons. He was just about to open Disneyland, and he wanted to make sure that people saw the Tomorrowland part of Disneyland as not fantasy, but future reality, because Disney himself knew the science existed, but the American people didn't. So he partners up with Werner von Braun. They put these three TV specials together on the wonderful wood of Disney at a time when there weren't that many channels. So if you had a special episode of Wonderful Wood of Disney, you probably had 30, 40% of the American people see it. And Disney's ability to tell stories, his use of humor and animation and models and special effects told the American people something very complicated and very scientific in a way that they could get it, that they didn't have to all be engineers. I actually have a civil engineering uh, degree, so I got hooked on the, the, the science part of this early, but the storytelling part is what really uh, uh, fascinates me. Um, and so I want to uh, again share this idea with you, show you a great little clip of the collaborative side of NASA's culture that was actually part of a documentary on, this, on the uh, space uh, uh, program, the uh, X-38 project. That was the uh, a rescue vehicle for the space station. It's a five minute clip, and uh, I'll pull that up for you in a second. And Oh, before I play it, uh, any people here have worked at NASA or know this culture that I'm speaking of? Cool. We gotta we gotta talk. Okay, so here is this amazing culture. Farm is older than most of the team members working on the X38 project. For over 40 years, it has test flown nearly every experimental craft the U.S. has designed. I don't think a lot about the day we first put it on the station. That would be a great day. That would be plenty of celebration. That would be a really great day we have. The day that really matters is the day that someone gets in the space where they come home. And their life and their family's life is that. And the whole program is going to depend on that working right. The CRV is the first vehicle ever yeah. being if you need to log into the can, it's like it's for bad. space rescue. And I think the other thing that keeps the team going is to have worked so hard on it and then to have the reward of flying it. The people aspect of this program is probably one of the more interesting aspects. Um, it's truly a team. In the X-38 program, we do have a large European contingent that's working with us. The European Space Agency uh, is a partner with us in the X-38 program. In the Netherlands, they're building the rudders, the space test vehicle. Um, in Spain, they're building the landing gear. The Germans had come up with a very interesting, very unique composite material, the thermal protection system that we're putting on the nose of that vehicle. In France, they've done a lot of the aerodynamics work, aerothermodynamics work with the new shape. Even small countries, like Belgium, for the space test vehicle, built a lot of the uh, structural parts of the aircraft vehicle. So it's really been all across Europe.
drag chute slows the X-38 down and rearranges it horizontally so the parafoil can be deployed from the top. triggered in a precise sequence by pyrotechnic cutters buried within the mine. When it's fully opened, it is the same surface area as the wingspan of the Boeing 747. It's about thinking differently. It's why there's an X in front of the X-38. It's an experimental bit of it. It's about going off and really trying to create the new technologies, and we encourage the people here to think that way. Unlike the space shuttle, the skid-type landing gear on the CRV does not require a runway to mount. And unlike the Soyuz, the parafoil can be steered so the astronauts can choose their landing site. to not have war be the defining factor of what is the politics of nations, that a major collaborative effort is. And that would be a very different dream for the next generation to think about. was new to me, and to hear about how it had been built by so many different nations, I mean, literally, this was a great little bit of story, but I, I don't know how well this communicates to people who are not already into space, so I want to get your feedback, because I am looking for models for how to tell the story uh, effectively. Um, there was one uh, question I wanted to ask that also gets at this from another direction. I mean, when you think of the challenges we face right now, uh, budgetary challenges, uh, political challenges, uh, education challenges, uh, which one do you think is the, uh, the greatest one uh, we face today? Uh, what? Switching from 75% carbon energy, which is dead plants and dead animals baked for 350 million years to 75% space energy, wind, waves, uh, sun. That's a, great, that's a great challenge. Thank you. Any other? Education. 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 Uh, I think we don't worry about educating the, the youth. I think if we don't worry about educating the youth, then there's going to be nobody to to carry on whatever it is we want to carry on. And uh, I think that's absolutely important space because we need to be there eventually. Our population's growing way too fast and I don't think that anything's really being done about it. I, I also think we need to be in space because somewhere out there there's an asteroid with our name on it. Or core research, basically. We just need a lot more core research. Um, to create new science, new industry, new technology. Um, in terms of NASA culture leading the country, that's that's what NASA culture is about, is core research. Or at least that's a that's a level nobody talks about. Nobody talks about the moon landing. But it's the core research that, that drives technology, that drives new industry. Solving those million un unsolved uh, questions at the beginning. Yeah. Do you have uh, another? Okay, yes. I mean, 
you said it, international stability, if we don't have collaboration with other nations, we're basically cutting our uh, resources and pieces and everyone's just working on their own thing. We can't be fighting against each other anymore. I, I, the, the answer I heard uh, once was um, the biggest challenge we face is that we can't solve all of those other challenges as long as we continue to function with this uh, zero sum, us against them, my way, not your way uh, uh, form of dialogue. As long as we don't come from a team and you know deal with your ego instead of you running you, uh, as long as we don't, as long as we come from that, where ego and and diverse uh, division is the dominant uh, uh, approach towards uh, working together. Uh, we're not going to be able to get the freedom of creativity and the, and, the, and, the, and the one plus one equals three or four or five um, um, human uh, uh, math going, math of teamwork. We need that kind of collaboration to get to the other side of all of these challenges. That's what um, I've been taught because although I started out as an engineer, I ultimately went into the world of organizational dynamics, and in organizational dynamics, it's all about how do we shift from the world of top-down thinking, where the boss runs everything and everybody else just does what they say, to a world of everybody learning from each other, and even though we have different titles, we're all equal in that we can contribute and make suggestions and figure out what ought to happen uh, together. Is there another? Yeah, okay. just a comment. I was um, having been uh, at NASA centers for the last 20 years and actually spent a lot of time traveling around. I think what you're really facing is a break in the paradigm shift. Uh, if you look at the NASA labs and compare them to the DOE labs, you're, I would say, should be appalled at the resources that are available within the NASA labs for research. Uh, you go to the DOE labs, they have a lot of very nice facilities for optics, for nanotechnology, and those things. You go around to the NASA labs, I was visiting a friend of mine down in uh, uh, Florida, visiting his community college, which is now a four-year college. I would say that the facilities that they have down there are actually a lot nicer than what I've seen at uh, a number of the NASA labs. You might ask for $20, million, $20 billion a year where your money has been going uh, for uh, R&D and technology development. And uh, I think what you're looking at is, with new space, is a shift in how NASA does business, that NASA can't afford to do business the way they've done it in the past, and that they're partnering with Armadillo, partnering with a number of other new space companies because they're looking for uh, cost changes. And so this is a very important shift to pay attention to. Sorry to take advantage, I just looked at my yeah, side. Exactly. Thank yeah. you for that. So we have a couple of minutes left. This challenge of storytelling is one other thing I've discovered, and it's one person I'm determined to connect up with, and believe it or not, Somebody here already told me where he eats lunch frequently every day. So here is one of the most incredible fans of the space program who also knows what I'm talking about. This is 30 seconds Look, of when we were able to drop when he accepted his Emmy for the from the Earth to the Moon miniseries. Tom Hanks working towards one common goal <laughs> and achieving the impossible. Something so impossible it was considered madness to consider it for thousands upon thousands of years. Imagine what problems we could solve and the ills that we could cure if we chose to live the same way the people of Apollo did in the 1960s. Thank you and God bless America. Did anyone else see that Emmy Award speech? It just blew me away. I happened to be recording it that night so I got lucky enough to grab it. I thought he was going to say he was running for president. Because <laughs> he knows that if we can transfer this culture to the larger society, we got a win. We got a huge win here. So that's what I would like your support in, your ideas in. I know we don't have a lot of time, but if you have cards, or I'll give you my cards, uh, let's stay in touch. And if you have some suggestions right now, please uh, uh, shout them out. Let's get them in the minute or two we've got left. Yep. Well, then what forces would be inhibiting that if that's you know such a good idea? I guess self self interests or any thoughts. 
what inhibits the transfer of culture? Largely, I think it's public education. People don't know the process. They know results. We, we talk about results. The news reports results. The news doesn't talk about process. It's, it's a very hard thing to cover because it's not visual. It's, 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 it's sociological and psychological. But again, telling the right story could do it. Shit, you nailed it. Uh, new visual education tools. Like there are great programs now that make it very easier to um, render things like stars and stuff. It, very high quality. Um, I mean, besides that, just like getting getting things like Hubble images to schools and stuff. I mean, how like how many kids in the world even know that Hubble exists? You know, or or that there is an, <laughs> another part of the world. Fuck, I don't even think that infrastructure is so good that we can boast people know what stars are around the world. Any other final comments? I want to be respectful of the time. Yeah, you know, the astronauts, every time they're interviewed, uh, they always try to say, you know, it's, we get to fly with this, this huge organization out there, right? But it's it's really hard to capture that and, and make that something that people can understand and relate to. And I think the way to do it is personal stories throughout the organization, basically. Get get to know the people who write the manuals, who, who, who organize the, the you know, the, the parts are a little bit outside the realm, but somehow find a way to hook that into the larger story, so it's so that you know you can connect that there are, that there's that there are other people involved in this in the long term vision kind of thing. Great. Thanks, everybody. And again, I've got some cards. If anybody, or you can just write your your email down, give it to me. Uh, any other comments or questions? All right. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it.